welcome to God's Country right here on the Cinnabar. Today we've got really an exciting episode for you. See, we've dug out another one of these old ranch rifles. This one's been in the family for generations. Probably hasn't been shot or messed with in a hundred years or more. This one's an 1876 Winchester with a set trigger and a heavy barrel. Now this is a gun that's been carried a lot and shot a lot which is a little bit surprising because these heavy barrel 1876s are one heavy beefy old gun. Most of them you see um, just haven't been carried and shot a lot. Most, most of the heavy barrel guns actually that I've seen anyway have had a lot of extra special order features you know most of them are, are deluxe rifles and uh, still in pretty good shape and whatnot. And this one hadn't been abused much but it just got used a lot and it's got a few problems. Um, you know, most of them just kind of minor stuff. The, the set trigger isn't working. Um, the, the chamber's a little rough and we can't quite chamber around in there. We've got a little bit of muzzle damage that's impinging on the bore. And, uh, well, it, it, the, the uh, lever latch doesn't quite close. So, n nothing really too big, but stuff that needs to be taken care of before we go out and shoot it. And shoot it we're going to when we get done with all this. So we're going to take a few minutes and head down to the shop and I'll show you how to take care of some of these issues if, if uh, we can figure it out once we get this thing apart. And then we'll really have some fun. We'll come back up here and put a few rounds through it. Now boy howdy am I looking forward to that. So stick around. We'll be right back. So here's this old heavy barrel 76. Now I think this was a working man's gun. It looks like it's been carried quite a bit, but it isn't all beat up. So I think whoever carried this gun really tried to take pretty good care of it. You can see the wood isn't all dinged up like you'd expect for one that was carried a lot. Although this buttstock has been refinished, you can see it's a little shy at the tangs, but it's not all dinged up and, and whatnot. The metal surfaces, while it's got a pretty heavy and even patina, it, it doesn't look like there's much in the way of pitting. If there is un anything underneath this patina, uh, it looks like it'd be really light. So it wasn't... Um, put away wet and, and allowed to rust real bad at any point in its life. The bore shows that it's been shot quite a lot. Um, it, it's, the lands are, are, are pretty weak on it, but it doesn't have the, the pitting or the uh, frosting that we would expect that we see in so many of these old black powder area era guns. Uh, but it is really weak right out here at the muzzle. In fact, almost non-existent the, the rifling out there. So it sh indicates to me that whoever shot this gun and packed this gun cleaned it religiously and most likely with a steel cleaning rod um, with some of black powder residue, which is pretty corrosive stuff and, and abrasive and, and kind of took out the, the rifling right down at the end. So it's never going to be a tack driver again, but it indicates that whoever had this gun really tried to take pretty good care of it. What's really interesting, of course, about this gun is being heavy barreled, and that's a, a really um, unusual feature with these 76s. Not a whole lot of them made. Let's take a little closer look at that. I've got another 76 and 4560 from just about the same era, just not very far off serial number wise. We'll, we'll put these side by side and take a look and compare these, um, these barrels at the muzzle. Okay, so here's these two 76s side by side. And becomes real obvious real quick um, the size difference between the standard barrel on the left and the uh, heavy barrel on the right. Now one of the things we talked about a little bit uh, was that we have some muzzle damage on this this uh, heavy barrel rifle and you can see kind of up in this area we've got a couple dings here and it's pushed some of the metal into the uh, bore area so we're going to have to clean that up a little bit and then we've got some other issues that we need to take a look at too so we're going to have to take this rifle apart. Now I want to take it apart as little as possible, of course. Um, but we're going to have to take it apart some to get in and, and start looking over some of these issues and see how we can get them cleaned up. So we're going to start with what to me is the most terrifying part of taking down any old 73 or 76 that's been sitting for a long time without being taken apart. And that's getting this little screw out of the dust cover. So this one, I, I knew we were going to be doing this today, so last night I put some croil on it and let it soak overnight. And uh, now we're kind, of, they're kind of at the moment of truth where we're going to see if we can get that thing out. Some, so many times they're just in there so tight, 
and been in there so long you just can't get them busted loose and you booger them all up and this one the the slot's not in very good shape to start with so it, it might make this one a little interesting as well make sure you get the right uh, bit and this this one i'd already kind of checked it out and and it fits in there just right we're going to pull the dust cover back here that gives it a little more stability if you got it out here like this it can flop around some so we pull it back all the way back here and then we're going to get this in here and we're going to tap on the back end of this as we're trying to turn okay we've got the bit in the slot and now i like to tap down on it just to make sure that it's fully seated in there and and this one is and then we're going to start putting some pressure on it and tap at the same time and a lot of times that tapping that jolt or will uh help to loosen it up and if if this isn't successful we may have to go to heat and i'd really rather not do that there it goes hey hallelujah i've been nervous about this since i started thinking about taking this gun apart because i saw how bad a shape that screw head was in and while we've got it out we're going to clean that thing up a little bit if i can't get those out then i don't start tearing the other part of the gun apart um, because we can't get the bolt out until we we've, we've got this part taken apart so this is a, a big success and this bodes well <clears throat> for the rest of this project i'm hoping <laughs> okay so now we can pull this hammer back and slide this dust cover off and we'll put these pieces together here in the tray and we'll drop the hammer now now the hammer spring seems pretty weak and so when we get into this thing we're going to kind of check that out the uh, set trigger guns have a have a little different mainspring and hopefully uh, there's nothing wrong with it we can just tension it up a little bit next thing we're going to do is take this butt stock off and we've got uh, a couple of screws that we have to remove now we talked about some of the other problems one of the things that that we had an issue with that, that's a real simple fix is that this uh, lever latch wasn't working now you see as we we start backing that screw off we can make the lever latch work so what's happened is is the screws just a, a little bit long so we'll just take a little bit off the end of it before we put it back in and that'll allow that uh, lever to come all the way up and the latch to pop over it so there's the, that screw and then there's another one on the bottom side now that's a machine screw that goes through both tangs the, the one on the bottom side is a wood screw that just goes into the uh, buttstock itself now when we get this buttstock off we'll be able to start seeing uh, the set trigger assembly and we, we know that we have an issue with the set trigger there that goes and we're going to start getting into that now the problem with 76s as opposed to uh, working on 73s on these set triggers is that the lower tang is integral it doesn't come out on a 76 so the set trigger assembly down in here um, is a lot harder to get to and and uh, figure out what's going on than they are on a 73 where you can pull the whole thing out and work on it. okay so the next thing we want to do is is to take out this mainspring now i talked about the mainspring being a little weak and i was hoping that maybe this didn't have a homemade uh, mainspring in it and I found some guns that did but this one looks like the original but just these set trigger guns have a uh, they narrow up they're not full width like a, a standard mainspring is so this one maybe just needs to have the uh, adjustment taken up on it and there's a strain screw here in the bottom of the tang we're gonna we're gonna loosen that up before we take it out we're not gonna take it all the way out of there but we'll uh, loosen that strain screw so that the the uh, spring comes out a little easier now the spring is a little different than most models most models have a, a screw going in through the back part of the spring here but on a 76 you can see it's just held underneath this block here there's a groove in that block and we can pull it out this way and then the 
the hammers are going to fall back um, and get that out of the way and we can start to see what's going on maybe with this uh, set trigger assembly it, like I say it's kind of hard to get into them here like the 73 we can pull that lower tang out and really get a look at it but uh, I think I can see what's probably the culprit right now it's only got two set trigger springs and there should be three in there so hopefully that's the case now when you're having problems with it with a set trigger the first thing you want to do is get a tiny tiny little screwdriver and it takes a tiny one because the the adjustment screw here that's behind the trigger is really tiny and you can adjust that in and out and a lot of times it's just out of adjustment and if you'll get it adjusted properly and I think it's kind of counterintuitive I think when you you back it out it makes it uh, stronger if I'm wrong about that somebody's gonna let me know right away but anyway um, try that first and then a lot of times after that if, it, if there isn't a broken part that's causing the problem it's just because it's all gummed up now this one's really clean and surprisingly the inside of this gun so far is really really clean so um, I think Unless I'm seeing something wrong, I think we're missing one of the springs in there. Unfortunately, I've got some some extra set trigger parts around, and maybe we can we can find uh, that that middle spring. I think that's the real stout one. I think they call it a sear kickoff or knockoff spring, something like that. Anyway, we'll we'll keep working on this thing. We'll get the side plates off now and see if we can't get the the bolt out of the gun and and the toggles out. Okay, so here's another screw head that's in pretty rough shape, and we're going to have to uh, clean that one up a little bit. Peen it back and, and clean that slot up after we're done. Thankfully, uh, this thing's not near as gummed up and hard to get apart as some that I've played with before. Even that side plate come off nice and easy. Somebody did really try to take care of this gun. And, and I have never had this gun apart, or even really thought about taking this gun apart the toggles should come right out of there now and they, they actually have a little oil on them and cleaned up pretty well so that's pretty nice the other side ought to come out just about as well there we go they're in excellent shape there's no play in the linkage or anything the pins aren't or the pin holes aren't wallered out the pins look like they're in good shape Okay, so now we can take the uh, the two springs out here for the lever and the carrier. And this one, the uh, the little cam on the lever is still in really good shape. A lot of them got wore out, and that's why you see the the uh, levers will kind of hang down here. There's just a little cam here off of this spring that we just took out that that keeps that lever from doing that. And if they didn't get good um, lubrication, then they wore out and let that lever just sag there and there we got almost got that one and of course you probably notice when I got that one loose the carrier dropped down in there and okay so now we're going to work on getting this hammer out of here. and There's some complicated stuff in here with this set trigger. Um, we're not going to go deep into set triggers in this episode. That's, that's an episode all of its own. At some point we'll do that and we'll show you set triggers from, from the different varieties. And there comes the hammer. Hammer's in good shape. The notches are in good shape. I can, might need to put a stone on that one, the safety notch, just a little bit. It's in better shape than what I expected. 
Okay, so now we're going to drive that. Actually, I'm going to leave that for right now. Um, the trigger in there. Let's take the lever out of here. Still see some original case colors in the inside here and on the finger lever. Of course, that's not going to come out of there because I didn't pull the or push the pin out yet. Let's see about getting the carrier lever out of here. There, come out of there. There's our carrier lever. That's the lever that that lifts and lowers the the carrier obviously okay now we've got the firing pin retractor needs to come out and the pin that holds it in that's these pieces right here i can't believe how clean this is in here now we can take the firing pin out and it's in Amazingly good shape as well. And the bolt should come out. It's a little rough on the bolt face, but uh, better than a guy would have expected here. And now, uh, Carrier comes out and we're gonna to have to do a little cleanup on that carrier. It's uh, more than a little bit just green right now And of course we don't want to polish these These brass parts, but this green will come off just with well like simple green or any kind of a cleaner and a cloth um, You know if we, we polish that up then we shine it up and we lose the patina on it We want to keep it looking as original as possible. I think this one Probably has been polished in the past, um, but a long, long, long time ago. Okay, so now we've got it apart. Um, and of course we had to take it apart because we're going to try to polish this, this chamber up. Remember I said that uh, it wouldn't chamber around right now because it's rough in the chamber. And we're going to have to go in through the back to do that. And then we've got another little process that we're going to have to go in through the back um, on this muzzle part too, we're gonna we're gonna get to, um, we're gonna put a piece of lead in there and kind of see what the diameter of that is and get a, a basically a casting in that muzzle. So stick around. We're gonna uh, kind of get set up and and go to the next step now. Okay, so now it's time to take a look at this muzzle damage and see what it's going to take to fix that upright. Now it doesn't go in very far, maybe about fifty thousandths. And if a 76 was like some of the other models and had a chamfer right there on the on the muzzle, um, it'd probably clean most or all of it up. But 76s didn't come with a chamfer like that, so it'd never be right. And on a lesser gun, I might be tempted to do that because it'd be just super easy to go in there and just put a little chamfer in there. Um, but we're going to try to do it right, even though it's going to be a little more involved. Um, our method, we're hoping to save as much metal as we can and, and not... Uh, just bore the end of that out. Okay, so hopefully you can see this, but we've got a little ding right up, right here and another even smaller one right here. And and they've pushed metal back into the bore here. And like I said, they're about 50 thousandths in there. There's just two spots there. It looks like at some point in the past, this is the only place on the gun where there's, there's bare shiny metal showing. I think somebody kind of tried to clean up the outside out here because of these dings. But they didn't get that that was inside the bore in here. And if this gun has got any chance of having any accuracy, we've, we've got to get that out of there. So what we're going to do today is, is kind of a three-step process. First thing we're going to do is to try to save as much of that metal as possible. Rather than just go in there and cutting all that out, we, uh, we shined up a, a round punch here with, to 1,000 grit. We're just going to try to push as much of that metal back as possible. And that's just kind of the first step. Um, so we're just not cutting all that out of there. So let's just, and we're not going to push it all the way out, but we're just going to get it kind of started and move back where it, where it needs to be a little bit. And that's, that's actually working pretty good. 
it's certainly not going to be perfect but uh it'll it'll get us started this one that i'm working on here is a little bit further into the bore than the other one the other one kind of came out pr pretty decent Wow, that actually worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. Again, it's not perfect, and we can't really leave it like that. But it's a whole lot better than what it was. A, that gun could be fired just the way it is, and, and would be a lot more accurate than it was about uh, 45 seconds ago. That came out really, really nice. I've got a little high spot right in there. Okay, so the next step is we're going to make a cast of just the very end of this bore. We're going to do it kind of a, a simplistic way. Um, if you watch my recent video where I, I slug a bore, we're going to kind of do a mini version of that. We're just going to slug the very end of this bore in the last 50 thousandths where we had the damage and, and get kind of a mirror image in this, this musket ball here. Um, and then we can decide where, where we go from here based on, on what we find. So this, this musket ball is just a little bit too small. So the nice thing about lead is we can deform it really easily. So we just take it over here to the bench. And now it's just the right size. So we'll get it back over here. And give it a shot. Okay, now we're just going to tap this musket ball down into the muzzle end of the barrel. And that should give us a, a good indication of what, what it looks like down here on the end. Now we'll take this wooden rod and or wooden dowel I should say stick it in through where the bolt came out or the firing pin and bolt and we'll push that that musket bowl back out of there maybe need to tap on it some And there it is. So we're about the highest point to the lowest point, about three thousandths of an inch out around. So that really brought that muzzle back. Now, what my my plan was is to make basically a, just a single flute reamer, or basically a, a cutter that would I could just cut that excess off. But that's close enough now. It's just almost right back to where it needs to be. So I think what I'll do instead, and I was going to after after cutting with that little single foot reamer, um, put a, get a brass mandrel and some lapping compound or flits, and and put on there and just smooth it out. But I think we're close enough now. We can just go ahead and and make our brass mandrel and uh, polish that that just that very leading edge out. And, and be good. Okay, so I uh, spent a little more time here with this polished round end punch here and got this really, really close now. It's, it's lacking about maybe a thousandth and a half in most of it. Um, now, and we've got our, our, our brass piece made here. We're just going to put a little bit of j and uh, lapping compound on it. It's a real, real fine abrasive. 
And then we're going to concentrate it right, uh, right down where the damage was. So we can just smooth that out a little bit. And that's all we need to do now is just kind of smooth that up just a little bit. And uh, if we can get it good and close and where it look, looks good, then we'll call it good. If not, then we may still need to get make that uh, cutter we were talking about. Get that spread a little bit better. And of course, we were using this brass because it's softer than the steel. And uh, so it's just, just going to be the, the abrasive that's doing the polishing. We're going to groove this brass, of course. But that's okay. We'll sacrifice the brass to fix the, the bore on this thing. Now notice I'm just concentrating down in the area where it was we had problems. And now where there was just a couple of high spots, we've just got a couple of shiny spots down in there. So that should uh, shoot a whole lot better. So the next step in the process, we're going to get that chamber cleaned up. But in the meantime, we're going to give this bore a good soaking. I've got a special concoction. I made up a, a plug here for the for the muzzle end that we just got fixed up. And uh, we're going to we're going to fill this up with, with my special brand of bore cleaning fluid and let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll, we're going to clean this uh, bore really, really good. Get that uh, abrasives out of it and, and clean it up good. And then we'll work on that chamber after it's had a chance to soak all night long. Well, we've let the bore soak overnight on this old rifle. We pulled the cork and now we've swabbed out the bore. Now let's see if we can't polish up this chamber, um, get it cleaned up where it'll accept a round. Okay, so I like to use a wooden dowel for, for our rod for uh, polishing these chambers. And I start off with a 320 grit and then go to a 400 grit. And, and we do it wet with a little bit of oil on it. Now usually I'll wrap this um, paper on the dowel first. But on a 76, we have to go back through this firing pin hole. So we've, it's a little trickier to do, but we, we can get it done. Oh, I skipped a step here. The first thing we need to do is see how long our chamber is. And we can just hold up a, a spent cartridge next to our dowel rod here and make a mark there. That way we don't get too far in there and start polishing uh, the throat area and, and, uh, taking, and weakening the lands and grooves in that area. So here, here we go. We'll, we'll stick this dowel in here. We've got our 320 grit to start with and we're just going to put uh, I've got electrical tape on there but pretty much any good sticky tape will work. And then we've got to get it right out on the end. Okay so we're going to just wrap that around. And we've got a little oil in the chamber but we'll put a little oil on the on the paper as well. Before we get started here, we've got to keep that wrapped up pretty tight. Tricky parts getting the oil on while we've got it wrapped up good. Okay, so there we got some oil on it. Maybe get a little more. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to get it into the chamber here. I let it expand a little bit there unfortunately so there we go and now we're going to put a drill on the end of it okay so that's that's all there is to it now we're just going to spin that around there we, we know where our black mark is that we're not going to go any further than that now our paper's not quite as long as the chamber, so we're going to work it back and forth a little bit. Maybe give it a little more. Okay, now we're going to pull it back out and shine a light in there and see what, what it looks like. And of course... I wasn't smart enough to leave a light route out here where I can get to it easily, so I'll be right back with a light. Yeah, and that's probably what we're going to get out of that 
320 we still got a little bit of roughness there in the bottom of that chamber but um, we can't polish everything out so now we've got our 320 we're going to go to a 400 grit for a finish oh, didn't get it right on the end again there we go Okay, let's get some oil on that. Get it in there. And get our drill back on. Always go the wrong way with the chuck on the drill. Okay, now we're going to finish this polishing here with 400. Okay, and that's all we're going to do um, with that polishing. Now we'll take this out here. In the moment of truth now, we'll see if a, uh, a shell will chamber. Hey, look at that. That did the trick. Well, rather than turn this episode into a marathon, I'm going to take a little break, go out and do a little shooting. And then we'll come back next week with part two of this episode. We'll take on that set trigger assembly, see if we can't get it functioning, get that old 76 back together, and just see how she's going to shoot. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.